Hi, in this packet chaser, we will communicate in a cyber war. The objectives of this activity is Part 1. We will send an email between users. Part 2. Upload and download files using FTP. Part 3. Remotely access an enterprise router using Telnet. And Part 4. Remotely access an enterprise router using SSH. Now we move on to part 1. Send email between users. We will send an email from Mike BC at Moham Healthcare Branch to Sally at Metropolis Bank HQ. So on the healthcare center, we click on Mike PC and on the desktop tab, click on the email. This is a email uh, composer, and we click on the compose button and enter Sally email address enter the subject and enter the content of the email and then click send you can see the status at the bottom of the email composer sending email to Sally the subject and the send success and we have a question what protocol was used to send the email to the email server so the answer is SMTP or simple mail transfer protocol on step 3 we uh, will check uh, the email on the Sally PC click on the bank center and click on Sally then we click on receive and here we get we got my email and the question is what pro protocol would use to receive the email from the email server you can see uh, the status the receiving email from pop3 Now we will move on to part 2, upload files using FTP. On step 1, we set the packet sniffer to capture traffic on the correct port. We set, uh, we will enter the geographic root view to see all three remote sites. Uh, root view here. We should, uh, click on root view and see the remote site and uh, we click on the cyber criminals sniffer and on the GUI we click on port 1 and you can see the sniffer port 1 to capture all the traffic on and off for first side 512 okay and leave the cyber criminal sniffer open and visible. So we will click on top here. Next, we will uh, remotely connect to the FTP server uh, from the Mary PC at healthcare at home. Okay, at home here. And click on Mary desktop and command prompt and we click on connect to the FTP server by typing FTP and the address or 3 the username Mary
password is Cisco123. Cisco123. We have just uh, logged in successfully. Now we will upload a file to the FTP server. And here on the cyber criminal sniffer, you see the buffer side with the TCP protocol and the FTP protocol on the layer 7. I enter the command here and check for the files on the FTP server and next I will upload the news clients.txt file to the FTP server by using the command put new client txt so this file contains sensitive uh, client information no no such file directory maybe the wrong file name put new client dot txt the transfer it has completed and we can type dear and we got these files on the FTP server and we have a question why is FTP considered an insecure protocol for moving files the answer is FTP protocol does not have uh, a way to encrypt the data uh, from transferring uh, from uh, the source to the destination now on step 4 we analyze the FTP traffic to prove uh, that answer and uh, we uh, Click the cyber criminal sniffer and you can see here the Ethernet frame. We got the so address, destination address, and on the IP header, we got the so IP destination IP, and on TCP, we got all the information and the FTP command the user is married other information FTP here sequence number data FTP sequence number FTP data FTP FTP here we are searching for sensitive information here we got the FTP command uh, password with the uh, plain text password so that's uh, the sensitive information and the sniffer can get uh, can have the information to log into the FTP server so we have just uh, done part two. Now we will move on to part three. Remotely access an enterprise router using Telnet on the day PC at the healthcare at home. Click on it and open the command prompt and uh, press it and here we will ping the router
and we got the replies from the router so we turn it to this router with the user admin and the password cisco123 now we have just logged into the sq router and we enter the show user to view the active telnet connection to the enterprise router so user and on the result we have the live bty0 user admin and host in the idle status with the idle time and the IP address of the client okay and why telnet is considered an insecure protocol for remotely managing a device because the telnet protocol does not have the method to encrypt the information when transferring from the source to the destination Now we will move on to part 4, remotely access an enterprise router using SSH. Firstly, we will enter the Goham Healthcare branch site and then click the PC of team. Team, click on desktop and command prompt. Then we ping to the HQ router we can, we can copy this command ctrl c and paste request timeout on the first packet the second one and we got the two replies from the router and we ping again and now we got four replies from the router now we use a command hz uh, dot uh, l admin username and the destination we copy with the password of Cisco 123 Cisco 123 we have just logged in to the HQ router and show user we got show user to view the active SSH connection to the enterprise router Let's examine. We got the VTY0. So this section is of the telnet section. And with the idle time and the location, but the VTY1 is a SHH section. We got username, the horse status, the idle time, but there's no information about the location of the client. So, the SSS is considered a secure protocol for remotely managing a device because it uh, hides the destination uh, information and it uh, will encrypt the uh, data authentication data uh, when transferring from the source to the destination and now we will enter the global configuration mode using config terminal command and create the secret password of Cisco Terminal 
then enable script Cisco so with this configuration we will protect the uh, privilege mode from the user exec mode so that is all for this activity thanks for watching